Hello everyone, welcome back to a tutorial. I'm so happy to be able to do tutorials again. I was stuck without my PC for weeks and weeks, so finally I'm reunited. And yeah, a lot more tutorials will be coming. And in this week, I want to tackle a old technique I've used. I used it when I was working at Field. And basically the scene you're seeing here, we filmed everything on the tripod. So there was no moving in the camera. So everything we've added in post. And it's quite an easy technique. So I want to show you how to do this in Blender. So let's jump right in. So the first thing we'll do is open up a new scene in Blender. And we get a default cube. We can delete it. We can delete the light. And basically the first thing we want to do is go to our camera and to the settings and add an image. So for this tutorial, I've downloaded um, some stock footage from Pexels. I'll leave the link in the description. And basically for this kind of technique, you want to select a scene where you can quite easily replicate the geometry. So when there's lots of like little twigs and, and trees and things in the foreground, it's sometimes a bit harder to make it. For I did a C scene because it's really easy. It's like you could do it with two planes, but then the technique is the same for any kind of scene really. Let's get to the footage. So I've done two things with the footage. One, I've converted to 30fps because I put all my videos in 30fps and I created a PNG because it didn't seem to get the video background image working for the camera settings. So therefore I ordered a still image PNG and that's what we're going to use for our background image for our camera. So if we select the camera now and we hit numpad no or we can hit this camera icon, we can now see we have an image here and the color space is at ASUS which it's not. I don't know the exact color space, but it's somewhat like sRGB. Just select those values and we'll be good. And then we can zoom in so we can see it a bit better. The thing we want to do now is create some basic geometry that works like the sea floor. So we want to have a plane for that. And then we want a background for the sky. And then we can align our camera that it matches the perspective. So let's first add a plane. Make it a lot bigger. It should be like really, really big <laughs> because you can see the horizon is, I don't know, like more than 100 meters away, I guess. So you want to stick to world axis. And because we're kind of looking from the middle, this is more like 50 meters, I guess. So the next thing we want to do is we want to lock our camera to the view. So now we can orient our camera according to the plane. Let's hide our plane for a second. We can actually use the work plane for this. So now you can see, you can see the background line. I, I don't know how visible it is in the YouTube tutorial, but like here you can see the lines go all the way to the sky. So obviously it does, doesn't match. And here you can see those lines are disappearing into the horizon. Then you know we're in a good place. And because this is a really simple scene, it doesn't have to be much more complex than that. If we get our plane back now, you see it doesn't match completely. Uh, a little bit more. And this seems to work a lot better. And the thing is, because the horizon is so far away, it doesn't really matter if that bit doesn't line up exactly. Like, this is not precise science. <laughs> uh, so the next step we want to do is add a material where we can add our background to. So create a new material in the Material tab. And in the base color, use an image texture. Load it up, say open, go back to our folder. Here I'm going to load in my 30 FPS footage. Then we need to head over to a Material Preview mode. And the thing is, it doesn't look that good. One of the reasons why is because we have Aces Color Space on again, and we want sRGB. And you can see it doesn't match at all. And that's because we're still generating this image from UVs and not from the camera's perspective. So in order to do so, let's add a modifier and create a UV project. This will actually create a projector from the camera. So the only thing we have to do is select our object, which is the camera. And now you can see it's looking slightly better, but still not there. And what we need to do is we need to create more geometry in order to get the image lining up closely. So let's hit tab to go in edit mode. And I hit A to select all. And then I just hit subdivide, slightly better. Another subdivide, slightly better. Another one. And you get the point by now. And one more. Now it's looking a lot better. And you can see we have the C lined up nicely. 
And the thing that's left to do now is create a background plane for the sky. Again, let's hit Shift A and add a plane to it. We want this big as well. Uh, 100 is probably fine. And head over to your top view. So the first thing I want to do is rotate the object on the Y axis. And let's do 90 degrees. Then we can move it like there. Because our camera is looking from there. So that's kind of like where you want the object to be. And again, because this is so far away, it doesn't have to be super exact. And let's go back in our camera view. Let's add the material to this one as well. I should name them a bit better. Let's call it C. Add the C to this one. Again, we have the same problem. So let's add the UV project modifier to this one. Select our camera object. Go in edit mode again. Select all geometry. Subdivide, 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 subdivide. And now you get it. And the thing you can see is it doesn't line up perfectly. What we can do now is we can start tweaking our camera until this lines up. We don't want to mess with the rotation. And yeah, this is just tweaking it until you get something you like. I think that is working better. Oh. I think that's looking a lot better. Um, again, this doesn't have to be really precise. Um, but this will work. And maybe it's a good time to save this now. And now what we can do is we can disable the background image. And we can enable depth of field. So we can lower the f-stop. Now you can see we're getting some like nice depth of field. And what we can do as well is we can tweak the focal length of the camera. And therefore we can create this kind of like zoom in effect. And we can change the focus distance. So for example, we can, can like skim over it. And here we can see the front and we can zoom into the back. So now all that's left to do is we need to set the frames to 300 because this video has 300 frames. And then if you scroll through the timeline, you see that nothing happens because we need to hit auto refresh. And now when we do it, we can see the C moving and animating. And that's kind of it. Now it's just animating however you like it. Focus on whatever you want and play with the f-stop. So create more depth of field and less depth of field. And then set your focal length. And then you can create these zoom in effects. And that's it. So if you want to go really pro with this, you can hold your own camera and film a trackable point. So a wall or anything you can get some nulls out and some good tracking points on. And then export those nulls and export the camera to this scene. And then you can get some really nice natural movements. Uh, that's what we did for the diesel piece. And that's it for now. Just a simple tutorial about perspective in 3D. Um, I hope you like this. If you like more of this content, then definitely hit subscribe. I'll be releasing weekly tutorials and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.